Kingston, um, can you update us on uh, Ukraine and the secretary's uh, schedule? Has he had um, any meetings uh, in the last couple of days on Ukraine or any plan for later today to sort of discuss ongoing um, military buildup of Russian troops on the ground there? And has there been any discussion about increasing military aid? Specifically, are there any military advisors on the ground or is there any talk about putting advisors um, on the ground there? Thank you. A lot there, Alita. Um, I can tell you that the secretary did chair a meeting this morning um, with uh, key departmental leaders, including the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and General Walters out at UCOM um, to discuss uh, the situation. Uh, in uh, in Ukraine and, of course, uh, in Western Russia. Um, I won't uh, get into intelligence assessments, but he is staying uh, very keenly and closely informed uh, by uh, senior military and, and policy leaders here at the department uh, about what we continue to see, and what we continue to see is um, uh, added capability uh, that uh, that President Putin continues to add added military capability uh, in the uh, in the western part of his country and around uh, Ukraine. Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of uh, decisions one way or another that the administration uh, may or may not make here. Uh, Lita, as you know, uh, President Biden uh, will be calling uh, and talking to President Putin tomorrow. Um, I think we need to let that conversation happen. Uh, what I would um, what I would point you to is the secretary's comments over the weekend when he was out at the Reagan National Defense Forum, uh, where you know he said and, and still believes uh, that the diplomacy and leadership can still make a difference here, um, and that uh, there needs to be space for that diplomacy and for that leadership uh, to come to play uh, to try to get uh, an outcome here that is destabilizing and that doesn't result uh, in any sort of uh, open or armed conflict. Yeah, Tom. Are there still U.S. military trainers in Ukraine? If so, how many? Uh, what kind of training are you providing? And also, what kind of uh, military equipment is still being provided to Ukraine? I, I don't have a specific number of, of uh, advisors that may or may not be on the ground. As you know, Tom, that's a sort of a rotational thing. Uh, and it's been... Uh, um, it's been in keeping with uh, longstanding support uh, by... Uh, two different administrations about uh, making sure that Ukraine can continue to defend itself. I don't have an update on uh, um, on specifics with that. With that, um, I, I don't. I don't have an update, Tom. I don't. I, I, and I'm. I'm not going to uh, speculate one way or another on that. You have seen this administration, as well as previous administrations, uh, continue to provide security assistance uh, to Ukraine. Again, I'm not going to get ahead of decisions that haven't been made yet. Um, uh, but, uh, but we have uh, provided uh, millions of dollars worth of lethal and non-lethal assistance uh, to Ukraine in just the last, you know, 10 months, 11 months. Uh, it has included uh, anti-tank weapons, absolutely, but also non-lethal assistance as well. Um, and as you heard the secretary say, um, you know, over the weekend, we're going to continue to look at that. Uh, and, uh, and nothing has changed about um, our commitment to making sure that Ukraine has what it needs to defend itself. And it's not just the United States, Tom, as you know. I mean, other NATO allies and partners have also helped contribute uh, to Ukraine's capabilities over the last several years. But again, I want to go back to what I said before. Uh, uh, we don't believe that conflict is, is inevitable here, and that there is time and space, and there's, there's room for diplomacy here to reach uh, the best possible outcome.